Okay, so today we are going to be doing the one MOA all day long challenge. So this is gonna be a little bit different than our normal videos, which is probably a good thing because it is like really hot today and I don't want to uh, sit here and wait for years for the barrel to cool down because it's just, it's toasty. Um, but anyway, somebody suggested that I do or attempt to do the one MOA all day long challenge, which uh, Bloke on the Range, I believe was the original person that posted the challenge slash video, but uh, Polinar Tactical was the, the video that I saw originally um, where they were trying to do it. So if you guys aren't aware of what the details on it are, there's some rules and restrictions, which I'm trying very hard to stay within the um, confinements of said rules, like there's a weight limit and all the uh, distance requirements and whatnot. You gotta use an app to measure your groups, but it's 10 shot groups at at least 50 yards with under a 10 and a half pound rifle. Um, I believe I'm saying these things right, so if I'm misquoting them, just read the rules because I'm, I might not be saying the exact numbers correctly, but um, we're at like 85 yards because I can't quite get back to 100. Um, but we're 85 yards. I'll use an app to measure the group sizes, but we're just basically going to take a handful of rifles and just see if we can keep 10 rounds under in, well, not an inch, but one in away at 85 yards for this particular setup. We're starting off with a SIG Cross and 6.5 Creedmoor. This was the one that I probably have the most hope for. The downside is that the Mirage is absolutely awful right now. So even without shooting a single round, the target is moving. <laughs> so this might go extremely poorly. I may not even end up posting the video if it goes as badly as, as I'd imagine it could. But uh, we got some rounds that I loaded this morning, which this is my typical hunting load. I'm gonna shoot 10 rounds. We're gonna aim for the center of the bullseye. I've got a target camera down range, so I'll, I'll try to keep them, just like we do our normal videos, I'll show you the target as I'm shooting it, and then we'll, gosh dang it, sorry. We'll, uh, we'll measure the groups afterwards, and we'll post all this stuff, send it in, and uh, just, you know, see how it goes. So anyway, this is more fun than anything. It's just not very fun right now, because it's so freaking hot. But uh, we're gonna we're gonna do our best. So I've only got a five round magazine here. I'm debating on just single feed and all these, but uh, this thing don't single feed all that great. So we're gonna go ahead and load five rounds. We're gonna aim for the center of the target and hopefully punch a group that's under one MOA. I don't imagine it's gonna go quite that smooth, but uh, by the end of this shot string, it's gonna be pretty dang hard to get a clear sight picture. So here we go. I can't even see the impact. I don't think there's a time limit on the shot string, which is really good because this suppressor is already getting so hot. I can't hardly see the target. I can see kind of a a dark area <laughs> right just under the bullseye but I couldn't tell you how big that group is to save my life um, we shot five we're gonna shoot another five I thought these were just a tad too long to feed from the magazine because I had issues with them the last time I went on a range trip I was gonna take a couple thou off the cedar but I kind of forgot to do it but they were shooting really good last time so as long as they feed from the magazine this will this will work out good I just I'm not trying to make excuses guys like 10 rounds under one MOA is usually pretty dang hard with anything that's not a bench gun it's it's just kind of tough I mean it's asking a lot out of most guns especially under 10 and a half pounds it's kind of hard to accomplish so this gun shoots really really well but I don't think I've ever done a 10 round group on it ever so I'm curious to see what this is going to end up looking like, especially in this kind of heat, because that barrel's not super thick. So, five rounds down the pipe. I'll put five more on that sucker. Okay, I don't really know what we're looking at, so 
we're gonna look at this together. So, the Sig Cross and 6.5 Creedmoor actually cleared one MOA. It just barely snuck in there. It was like 0.96 MOA, but technically it was under one MOA. So um, I need to double check and make sure that that gun's under 10 and a half pounds. The only way that I really had to weigh these things was to just stand on a scale um, with and without a gun and just subtract the number. I didn't actually have a, a scale that I could just put the rifle on and weigh it um, accurately. I was using like a big shipping scale at work. So anyway, I'm gonna have to borrow a scale, but we'll get some more accurate values on these guns just to make sure that we're actually within the, the rules because um, I'm not trying to cheat. It's more for fun anyway, but um, I'm still trying to play by the rules. At least you want to follow them as best we can. That's the only gun that I'm really confident that could even have a chance at doing this. To be honest with you, the rest of them, I'm just kind of like, maybe, <laughs> but I doubt it. Because uh, it's mostly going to be ARs and then I have a Ruger American. Everything else I have is uh, too heavy. But um, anyway, these uh, these guns, we're going to give them a shot. So anyway, I need to stop talking. I've got a 6.5 Grendel here. Um, I may or may not post the specs on some of these guns in the description. I don't really know if I want to take the time to do it because it will take forever. But uh, it might be a good idea just to go ahead and get out of the way. So that if you guys are curious about this stuff, then you'll have the details right at your disposal. So... Um, might be a really, really long description or a spreadsheet link with the, <laughs> the descriptions for each one. So anyway, I'm going to shut up now. 6.5 Grendel with the 105 Sierra Blitz King, Starline Brass, 8208 XBR, and CCI 450s. Aero Precision receiver set, but the gun was put together by me. So 10 rounds. We're going to go for the top left diamond on this one. Pretty sure we're already over an inch, but we're gonna go ahead and shoot him anyway. That was a pretty big group. I'm not uh, gonna go down and measure it right now. I'm gonna shoot another rifle and then we'll go down and measure groups after the fact. But if I can see that they're not under one MOA, like obviously i'm not even gonna waste my time with walking down there until we uh get one that's a contender so anyway that was a 6.5 grendel i do have some other bullets that i want to try in this just for because why not right um i've got some 100 grain eldvts that are pretty new to the market and i did some hand loads with those so i'm probably going to do 10 shots with that too just to see how they group but uh, for now, we're gonna put this thing away, let it cool off a little bit, and then we're gonna grab another rifle and try to do this again. Okay, next up we have the 22 ARC. This one has a 18 inch ballistic advantage barrel and we are shooting Hornady Factory 88 grain ELDM match ammo. I am going to be doing more information on this, as of right now, a new cartridge in the future on the Risen Citizen YouTube channel. So if you guys wanna know more about the 22 ARC or see some shooting videos of the 22 ARC, and see some data that we've been getting from uh, factory ammo and hand loads refer over to that channel please but as of right now we're going to shoot a 10 round group with the 88 green eldm and hope that we don't blow too many primers because it's a uh, hornady factory ammo and they like to load their stuff really high From the looks of it, eight out of 10 rounds went into a really small group, but two of them didn't. So that one is out. We will move on to a different gun. I don't know which one yet, so give me a minute and we'll figure it out. Okay, so the next gun that we're going to be shooting is the Ruger American Gen 2 Predator, which has got the 22 inch barrel and 223. And the ammo that we're gonna be shooting is Federal's gold medal match with their burger open tip match 73 grain boat tail hollow point bullet so this gun's not even broken in yet I, I don't even know if it's got 50 rounds on it it definitely has less than 100 but uh haven't cleaned it yet so um i'm still just kind of playing around with this gun to see what kind of accuracy it can produce but i think that these shot pretty good on the the first test that we did with it so we're gonna give it a try i think it'll be a good candidate so we're gonna go ahead and aim for the top right diamond and we're just going to mag feed all 10 of these. I 
think this group's already pretty big. <laughs> it's hard to see those little 22 caliber holes on that paper. Yeah, I'm not even gonna waste the ammo because this is a uh, this ammo isn't exactly cheap, so we'll just skip this gun as far as giving it a, a fair chance because it, it already blew it, so that's okay. We're gonna move on probably to another AR in 223. I think that's all I've got left, and uh, we'll see how many more groups we can put on paper before we call it a day. Okay, so I didn't entirely give up on this gun. Um, I feel like somebody's gonna get mad at me if I did. So I'm gonna try some hand loads. I have not hand loaded them for this gun, but they should work in this gun just fine. But this thing shot the 53 grain VMAX really well when we did our original test on it. And that's what I use to hunt usually with 223. So I've got some hand loaded 223 with the 53 grain VMAX and some IMR 8208, which has served me very well as a powder for quite a long time. So. We're gonna try a few of those. Um, I got 10 rounds loaded. We're gonna try this again. I'm gonna go for like the left side of the center diamond probably on this one to keep the target somewhat clear of hits. And we're just gonna see if these shoot any better. And if not, then we will abandon it again. But um, we're gonna try to give it a, a second chance here to get a little bit of redemption. Okay, so we're already at well over an MOA again, I'm pretty sure if I'm seeing the target right. So this one gets a strikeout. We're not even gonna give it a third chance. We're just gonna go with two because that's more than I originally intended in the first place. Because there's not supposed to be any mulligans. No no retries, but I wanted to give, give this little guy a chance and he just didn't do it. So we're gonna move on to another gun. Um, I might actually bring the Grendel out again because I did have those ELDM or uh, DVT bullets that I wanted to try but uh, not sure if that'll come next or if it's still cooling off so I'm gonna go turn off the cameras for a second and we'll figure out what we're gonna shoot next okay so it's about to thunderstorm um, it was like really hot and sunny and the clouds are rolling in it's getting windy so we don't have a whole lot of time left I'd imagine but I'm gonna try to squeeze in a group or two more before we get like completely drenched but um, this is my air 15 that I use for coyote hunting um, 10 round mags YouTube so but uh, it's suppressed, obviously. I don't know if this one meets the weight requirement. I'm hoping it does, but I haven't actually weighed this one. Uh, either way, we're gonna put 10 rounds through it with my hunting hand load, which is a 53 grain VMAX. And uh, same deal, 10 rounds. Oh, we're done. Well over an MOA. That didn't take long. Okay, so good news is we're gonna try the Grendel one more time just because the bullet that I'm probably going to use in that gun going forward is the one that we're about to try. Okay, so we've been lucky enough that we haven't gotten rained on yet, so we made it this far. We're gonna go ahead and try the, the Grendel with the 100 grain ELD VT with some in, Vitivore in 133 powder, just see how it does. That might have done us in right there. I'll tell you what, if we were shooting five grout, five grout, five shot groups, that would have been stellar. But the last, last four or five rounds really sucked. I mean, it, it opened it up tremendously just in that last five rounds. So I think I'm gonna, call it a day we officially yeah I'm not even gonna measure that one we officially only shot one sub MOA group with quite a few different guns and ammo that just goes to show you how hard it really is to shoot a one MOA truly one MOA group with 10 round groups that's that's tough now I will say with this particular gun and I could be totally wrong by saying this but I do think that if I would be able to get some some more consistent brass, that might help a little bit with uh, with being able to shoot a really really consistent group. Um, I still don't know if I'd be able to keep it under an MOA with 10 shots though, because that thing started stringing off like crazy, and that may just be barrel heat, really. Um, but this barrel isn't exactly 
skinny. So um, even with a thicker barrel, it's still punched out quite a bit on those last five rounds. But anyway, this was actually really fun. Um, it was kind of stressful just dealing with the, the heat because I, I don't like shooting when I'm all sweaty and stuff because I'm, it just, it makes everything a little more difficult. But uh, it was kind of interesting to see how difficult it is to legitimately shoot one MOA all day long. I mean, I, I am struggling to do it with several different rifles. Now, most of these are gas guns. Um, the one that we did shoot it with is a pretty nice rifle and I had a really nice scope on it. So like I'm using, um, we'll say top tier equipment to do it and it components as well. I mean, burger bullets, um, alpha brass using hydrogen powder and federal match primers. I mean, everything about it, I, I tried to make it as accurate as possible, but it's my hunting rifle and, um, it's what I would basically hunt anything in this state with. So. I just wanted it to be able to shoot really well because I'd, I'd like to be an ethical hunter. But anyway, I'm going to quit boring you guys with all the, the garbage. Point is, um, this is really a good practical test. It really is. The the whole challenge itself, I like it. I like the fact that they they um, started this contest or, or whatever you want to call it because it I will think I think it will um, humble a lot of people that think that their rifle can shoot when I'm away all day long. Of course, there's always going to be those people that tell you that they can shoot one MOA all day long. Um, everyone says it in the gun store, but realistically speaking, I'm gonna tell you right now, I can't. Definitely not with every gun that I own. Even with hand loads, um, it's hard. I mean, it, it's really tough. Even with a gun that you know can do it and you're not using a, a sled or skis or whatever you wanna call them, it's, it's still a challenge. You just, you gotta really be on your game. And uh, shooting guns can be fatiguing. So it'll wear you out just by the end of the group. <laughs> At least I'm worn out now, but I'm also been sweating like crazy for a while. I'm surprised I haven't got rained on yet, but I don't know if the storm's passing us or what. But anyway, um, thank you to Bloke on the Range and Pulling Our Tactical for doing this challenge. I um, I think it was actually a really good idea. I hope you guys get a lot of entries. I hope you get a lot of contestants, so to speak, and people that that um, buy into it because there's there. I think there's a lot to be learned with that, especially with the amount of data that can be collected from all the people that could try it. I wish I could have gotten to 100 yards, but um, it's just kind of hard for me to produce it with this spot. But uh, anyway, thank you guys again. Um, thank you all for watching. I appreciate everybody that tunes into the channel, leaves a comment or whatever suggestions on what to do going forward always helps me out. Uh, please continue to do so, and uh, sharing always helps. So anyway, y'all stay risen, take care, be safe, and we will hopefully see you on the next video.